the federal election and what some of the different campaign promises being made are in regards to specifically Canadian housing and how it might impact the Canadian housing market. So first point, build or repair 1.4 million homes in four years. Um, 1.4 million homes, uh, sounds like a big, big number. Looking at the immigration uh, trends, I think uh, we might actually see 1.2 million immigrants just, just come in. Uh, in in the next year or so, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, so first of all, so that might actually be insufficient. What is up, YouTube? Matt McKeever here, and we're back with Wise talking about the Milton real estate market. Hey, Wise, how's it going? Hello, Matt. Thanks for having me here. How's everything going in your corner of the world these days? Uh, it's uh, it's going well. Um, you know, uh, obviously some uh, hiccups and obviously some election promises are are putting some people at bay <laughs> mm -hmm. and and some panic. Uh, so let's have a look at that and. Also, I just have a little bit of an update on my uh, basement uh, reno coming along. So I'll, I'm glad to share the stats and we'll have some discussion on, on the election promises of the various parties and, and uh, see what's beneficial for the Canadian homeowner investor uh, and uh, go from there. Awesome. Yeah, really looking forward to your project updates and uh, hearing what's going on in the Milton market. Because again, right now in the summer of 2021, it, it seems very locally oriented what's going on in real estate markets right some are seeing more supply some are seeing less supply some are seeing prices increase some are flattening some are starting to dip a bit and so i think it's more important than ever before that you know the viewers at home really get dialed into what's going on in your backyard what's going on in the local market that you invest in or that you're looking to buy in so really appreciate you sharing the stats and i'll pull them up on screen now here wise so yeah looking at the stats um if you look at, at last month, uh, Mil Milton average sold price was a million dollars. Um, again, it's back up now, $1.1 million um, average sale price. Um, monthly change is 8.3%, quarterly change is 1.4%, and year to year change over in Milton is 25%. So we're still, uh, we're in the positives for, for Milton. Mm -hmm. And as you can see this average sold price graph right here, it took a dip last month and then it's back up again. And with regards to number of souls, we've got uh, 85 detached homes sold, 81 uh, townhomes sold, and 15 condos sold. So with regards to the detached, uh, we see mostly positives, but uh, in, in the two bedroom section, uh, you know, we are just a little bit negative there, uh, not quite uh, uh, demand in the two bedroom section, but the usual, the three bedroom, uh, three bedroom, one car garage, and the four bedroom, two car garage, and the five bedroom, two car garages, all in the positives, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, average price, as you can see right now for a three bedroom is 1.2 million, uh, four bedroom is 1.4, and five bedroom plus is 1.7 million. So yeah, this is uh, getting, uh, you know, on par with the current markets around surrounding Milton. Yeah. And so I guess just talking out loud wise, you know, looking at just how it's changed over the last month, do you yeah. think was last month an anomaly? Do you think were people just kind of taking a break or taking the summer off or, you know, mind explaining why you think maybe for one month it dipped and now we're kind of back to where we were? Yeah, I, I think it was, it's probably uh, the Canadians enjoying their summer, right? Yeah. Uh, what is uh, last, you know, remaining of the summer now, right? Um, so we did see a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, uh, a slowdown in in uh, in viewings, so to speak, right, uh, and buyer activity. So if you notice that our days on market ro uh, rose, right, in the sense we mm -hmm. are we were selling a couple of months back, we were selling almost eight to nine days on market. Uh, so that was like 
like astonishingly fast. Within, yeah. a, within a week, your home would be sold. Uh, right now, we are at the 11 day mark. So almost it takes about close to two weeks to, to sell your home. Um, so it's taking a little longer to sell. Um, however, the markets, uh, you know, because of less inventory, the prices are, uh, have gone up uh, and, and stabilizing. Uh, yeah, so that's that's what I would say is that uh, it's probably because of, of the summer uh, that we could we could see a little bit of a of a dip in activity. Uh, people prioritizing a little bit more on um, going out and having a family time rather than looking at real estate. But mm -hmm. again, I think coming uh, coming close to September, uh, we'll have more people looking at homes, uh, looking to settle in in a home before before the school year starts. Gotcha. Yeah, really appreciate you sharing that perspective because I know, you know, sometimes looking at these stats or these graphs for the average viewer, they're like, well, which way are we coming or going now as a market, right? And obviously no one's got a perfectly working crystal ball, but really appreciate you sharing your perspective. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Matt. So, yeah, so let's uh, dig down a little bit more deeper uh, with regards to the townhomes and the condos. Uh, so townhomes as well. Uh, Still positive, two bedrooms, three bedrooms, and four bedrooms uh, have uh, significant, uh, you know, uh, positive increases year over year. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, yeah, in, in the sense, if, if you're if you're a couple looking for a townhouse, uh, good starting point uh, is is the two bedroom, uh, which is starting around two, uh, sorry, seven fifty ish. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you're uh, a family looking for a three bedroom about uh, 899 or 900 uh, you could probably land up with something around 850 as well depending on depending on the location and the condition of the home uh, yeah so townhomes uh, and yeah some premium executive townhomes are selling over a million dollars uh, uh, you know in, in premium locations and generally if they are um, also end unit they, they are uh, touching a million dollars Gotcha. And for anyone that's new to the Milton area, what are maybe some of those premium areas or neighborhoods that come to mind? Um, obviously, you know, um, uh, all these, uh, you know, school districts, the, you know, uh, Betty, uh, you know, uh, these areas and the new developments coming up, um, you know, uh, those areas uh, are premium. Um, so because obviously and the acquisition cost was also probably high. And then the resale is also higher on, on the newer bills. Uh, so anything that's coming up now in Britannia, Thompson area, uh, those areas, you know, the townhomes are a uh, million dollars. Gotcha. All right. Um, let's, uh, yeah, let's uh, look into the condos. Condos, again, a good starting point for first time home buyers in, in Milton would be a condo. So starting from about 545 uh, for a one bedroom and, and going up to about 642 uh, for, for a two bedroom. Overall, yeah, overall, uh, whether it is a first time home buyer or an investor, condos are always a great investment, uh, you know, in, in Milton. It's, it's a growing community and, uh, you know, the first uh, available or a stepping stone into real estate is, is a condo. So whether you're an investor or first time home buyer, um, looking into condos, um, it's it's a it's a good investment. Gotcha. Uh, let's look at the inventory. So in the last twenty eight days, two hundred and sixty eight new listings have uh, come, and out of that, one eighty one sold. Uh, so average days on market, like I, I said, has gone up a little bit, which is eleven days. Uh, selling price still, we are selling over over asking so about one or four percent of, of of the list price uh however you see see the graph in here uh you see that uh, from last last month to this month significantly there is a drop in the inventory the country continues to drop in the inventory as as well as sales uh, have dropped but on the other side you see because of these reasons the prices have gone also gone up yeah, it's placing just a lot of pressure, right? When there's yeah. such a, a low volume of inventory, anyone that wants to buy, usually they kind of want to move fast and they're going to grab something just because, it, you know, again, we're at near unprecedented uh, lows in regards to the inventory volume. Yeah, yeah. 
So um, yeah, there, there there were situations in which I have seen some homes uh, come onto the market that that had sold, uh, uh, let's say about six months back, uh, come back onto the market uh, for whatever reason, and then they have they they, they sold pretty much. Uh, you know, uh, I would say uh, just at what the 1.1 1 .1, uh, million mark uh, for the detached homes. So there is a little bit of uh, I would say you know uh, some turnaround in the in the in the market. Uh, whether it is based on as a uh, change in um, change in the work environment or you know people moving out of the city or whatever the case may be. So there is a little bit of uh, that as well. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, overall, like I said, there has been a little bit of a delay in selling, but still 11 days, uh, you know, is, is still not bad, um, uh, compared to other cities who have like plateaued, uh, in some of the markets that have plateaued, mm -hmm. Milton still appears to be, uh, a hot seller's market and a, and a hot market to, to purchase it. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, so days on days on market. So um, fourteen days right now for uh, anything between five hundred k and seven fifty k. That's mostly mostly your condos and uh, two bedroom uh, townhomes. Mm -hmm. Seven fifty to a one million. Uh, there is it's it's selling fast uh, in that uh, in that range. So about seven days, and then the over the million uh, to two fifty. Which is uh, mostly the detached homes are taking about twelve days to sell. Gotcha. Yeah, definitely. You can tell where there's a lot of demand, right, in the middle of that price range. <laughs> right. Right. This is this is the hottest uh, price range right there. Mm hmm. And so I guess just kind of talking out loud here, wise, what are you seeing with some of your clients? Are they, you know, are they kind of? Do they have that, I guess, fear of missing out? Are they trying to jump in and grab something soon? Are they hoping that you know the market catches its breath in the fall? What are you kind of seeing with your clients? Yeah, so that's what I, I want to discuss with you in detail with regards to the election uh, promises mm. that I've uh, come across. Yeah. Uh, some of my investor clients are are like, uh, you know, what uh, should I should I stop investing in in real estate because uh, I'm going to be taxed as, as an investor uh, or a flipper, right? Mm -hmm. um, other on the, on the other side, um, on, on the other side, we have um, we have our first-time home buyers, uh, you know, trying to trying to wait for these great incentives, right? Uh, which uh, which might not really be great, or you know, or might be counterproductive, right? Mm -hmm. So. Uh, so yeah, so there is a little bit of a hesitation from the first-time home buyers um, to getting into the market, and at the same time, investors are questioning themselves, saying that um, should we invest now, or should should I actually dispose of properties right now, uh, or not? Right. So mm -hmm. um, from my, from my side, I, I just told them that you know, election promise is one thing, and and to actually make it a law is another thing. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, keep continue can continue buying, right? Because we don't know who is going to be the next PM, right? And even if uh, you know, uh, even if somebody comes to power uh, who is not very suitable for for the real estate market, uh, it it's going to take a challenge to implement these election promises. Yeah, there's definitely a huge difference between the campaign promises and what actually gets enacted or gets rolled out. But yeah. it is interesting because for real estate investors, first time home buyers, they're definitely, I, I understand how there's a lot of just noise, I guess, out there in the market, right? Between the crazy price increases we've seen, all the different campaign promises being made. And it'll be really interesting to see how the market reacts in September, as well as going into October once we kind of know how the election settled. Right, right. So yeah, so I, I think uh, that kind of leads into our discussion. So we might as well go into it. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, just before that, going into that discussion, I'll just uh, quickly uh, brief here. Um, Fourteen most expensive, uh, which is Milton right now. Uh, just have a look. So mm -hmm. obviously, number one, of course, being our King City. But uh, what has changed? Let's see uh, with regards to the most expensive cities. Uh, so we're just after New Market. 
so new market Milton um, and then slipping down to 15th position is Brampton and and then uh, on the 17th is Toronto so Milton is, is is getting up a couple of notches here from from Toronto uh, and then Pickering also moving on to uh, 18th spot uh, with regards to the price so Milton is uh, number 14 in all in about 23 of uh, the cities uh, in the GTA mm -hmm. so and then with regards to growth uh, we continue to see uh, price growth in this uh, uh, in this city so 10 fastest growing um, days on market uh, like I said we have we were we were here in the, we were in the second third position we this year starting we were in the first position but right now we are in the fourth position uh, at 11 days uh, fastest selling yeah we are fastest selling city number number three or four right like I said mm -hmm. four. and then turnover uh, with regards to number of holds, uh, homes sold over number of uh, listings per, per month uh, we are um, about uh, 21 so basically 56.9% uh, uh, of homes being sold which are which are being listed are being are being sold all right, guys. Well, Wise and I wanted to quickly just kind of discuss the federal election and what some of the different campaign promises being made are in regards to specifically Canadian housing and how it might impact the Canadian housing market. So I've got my screen share up here. I'll just read them off uh, for you, Wise, and then feel free to uh, kind of give your opinion or potentially share some of the impact that this might have for Canadian investors. So focusing first on the Liberals here in red, we've got build or repair 1.4 million homes over a four-year period a two-year ban on foreign buyers, as well as homeowner bill of rights to ban blind bids, give legal rights for inspection and more transparency, and then a first-time buyer, uh, first buyer's tax credit doubled to 10,000, uh, 25% reduction in the CMHC fees, and rent-to-own projects, they'll be rolled out in the hopes that that will make housing more uh, easily accessible for first-time buyers, and then a new tax-free savings account to be used for down payments. Now, I guess before even sharing your opinion on this wise, I just wanna say for everyone, these are campaign promises. They often evolve or change once someone gets into power, but I guess when looking at the liberal platform wise, what do you think you know, Canadian investors or people looking to buy in Milton should be aware of? Um, okay, well, first point, build or repair 1.4 million homes in four years. Um, 1.4 million homes uh, that sounds like a big big number um, but uh, looking at the immigration uh, trends uh, which the Liberals actually have uh, already uh, allowed or uh, budgeted for I think uh, we might actually see 1.2 million immigrants just just come in uh, in in the next year or so right so mm -hmm. uh, so first of all, so that might actually be insufficient, right? Mm -hmm. Second point on the two-year foreign buyers, okay? So uh, foreign buyers are uh, not buying all of uh, you know Ontario. Foreign buyers are probably around four to five percent uh, in the whole scheme of things, right? So it's a very small number. So if, if you say five percent. Uh, you know, uh, you know, is is I would say you know it's not even um, significant in in the whole scheme of things uh, because it's just uh, you know they are just catering to the fear mongering, mm -hmm. saying that oh everybody you know all the foreign buyers are coming and buying everything. That's not really true. You know, the local investor is you know is is a local investor. Uh, you know who's, who's who's investing in 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 in, uh, in, in communities, right? Uh, which is ninety five percent of the investor pool, right? And the five percent is just a foreign buyer. Just just for you to uh, mm -hmm. you know put it into perspective, right? And homeowners' bill of rights to to ban blind bidding, uh, give legal rights for inspection and transparency. Okay, it's, it's, sounds sounds very good. I. I'm all up for you know inspections and, and, and transparency, but but as a homeowner, I want to get the maximum value for my home, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Wouldn't you, right? As a, as yeah. a homeowner, if you if you have a home, you want uh, you know the biddings to go high as as much as you can, right? Because uh, a home is your uh, investment. It's a sometime it's a lifetime investment that you have 
put in for uh, all through your life and you want to cash out and have a good retirement. I, I know a lot of um, seniors who have put money into their homes. They have taken care of their homes, right? Their home is their only retirement plan. Mm -hmm. So are you going to get, get to the, the, the seniors who have spent 30, 40, 50 years in, in their home and uh, they cannot get a fair price, fair market price? Um, if you if you open up bidding, it's just that uh, if somebody's offering, you know, 100K, I'll offer 101K, right? And see, mm -hmm. uh, it's, 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 um, I, I, I would say it'll still end up being, uh, you know, the price that the market determines, right? Yeah, I, I think that it sounds good on the surface, but a lot of us that spend a lot of time in real estate realize that, you know, whether it's blind bidding or whether it's some sort of auction system that they implement, um, again, the market still is going to dictate where prices land. And exactly. unless you end up with a lot more supply than what we've got in regards to demand, the odds of us ever seeing a balanced market again, I think it's very low. Yeah. So. So yeah, so the the blind bidding uh, again sounds good. It's a great uh, you know uh, election uh, promise because everybody wants uh, to stop the blind bidding, uh, but uh, you have to put it into perspective that it might uh, you know actually take some time to do that. And even if it's done, it, you know uh, it might not stop the market price. Okay, so if the market uh, market determines the price basically, right? Um, so it doesn't doesn't uh, matter. But um, yes, I'm all all for the the legal rights for inspection. In fact, uh, in most of my properties, uh, when I'm putting up a property for sale, I I I actually uh, as a value add, I do the uh, inspection for the homeowner. Okay, and uh, we have the inspection report in hand. And mm -hmm. if somebody says, "Oh, um, here's my offer, but I have a condition for inspection." I just give them the inspection report. I say, hey, you know what? There's a third party inspection. It's already done. It's from a third party. It's, it's not from me. And um, and there it is. So so there are other ways to to uh, you know uh, mitigate. Uh, you know uh, mm -hmm. instead of just going blind and saying, oh, here's my offer. I no finance condition, no inspection condition. Those things can be mitigated, right? So for finance, you get a pre-approval. For inspection, you get a pre-inspection. Okay, so there are ways to do it, and we are actually doing it. So, just want to educate to the audience that you don't have to go in firm. Uh, if you do go in firm, you have your pre-approval on hand. You get an inspection report from the homeowner. Urge the homeowner to get the inspection report so that you you know what they're they're trying to sell you. Okay. If mm -hmm. you know, you're paying over a million dollars, uh, you know it's your right to know what you're getting into. So urge the other realtor or the homeowner to get an inspection report, and um, yeah, so that you have transparency. You know what you're buying, right? So that can be mitigated through through those uh, as well. Uh, so you don't really need uh, need that uh, you know election promise to be fulfilled, right? Mm -hmm. First time uh, buyer's tax credit uh, doubled to uh, ten thousand um, dollars. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a nice uh, you know uh, gesture, but uh, what do you call it? Just uh, it's probably not going to really move the needle though in the big yeah, scheme of things. Yeah, because uh, you know the homeowner has a lot of uh, expenses and, and the closing costs and everything, so. Uh, yeah, the four thousand dollars that are, that is currently uh, provided, uh, it's not even making a, you know uh, any impact uh, to to that um, uh, as well. But uh, so it's additional six thousand dollars. Let's put it that way. It's not uh, yeah. So it's just additional five or six thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Uh, Twenty five percent reduction in CMHC. Uh, of course, uh, CMHC. Just to put it in perspective. They have uh, lost significant market share in in the past year or so, and mm -hmm. um, they're just trying to gain back the market share, you know, by by reducing the CMSC fee. Um, 
Sweet. Yeah, again, it, it'll make a small difference for first time buyers, but realistically, it's not going to magically make housing more affordable. Yeah, so if it was like what the, the CMSC fee was 2%, so it will be like 1.75%. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and, and rent to own programs, oh God, where should I uh, start even uh, here? You know, uh, how you need to understand, you know, for the audience, I'm just saying this, you know, uh, you need to understand what is a rent to own program. Okay, a rent to own program uh, is, is where the renter pays above market rents. Okay, so let's say you're paying $2,000 right now in rent. A rent to own program, in order to save for your deposit, you have to pay $2,500 for that $500 to go into your saving for your deposit. Mm -hmm. So as it is, the rents are high. And yeah. rents are going higher every day. We are, we are having multiple offers uh, in rental. Mm -hmm. So, so just try to imagine that you are asking the renter to pay above market rents in order to force saving. Um, I, I don't know about you, but you know, if my rent uh, or mortgage increased by five hundred dollars, you know, I'll have to look at my reevaluate my my budget you know, as to what I'm going to eat and how many times I'm going to go out. Right. Yeah, and I think when we're looking at rent to own programs, there's a lot of complexity behind it as well. And so, again, I think one one common theme we'll probably come to the conclusion on when looking at any of these campaign promises is they sound good on the surface, but once you kind of dig a bit deeper into it, you realize, again, that's not going to magically make housing more affordable because even if tomorrow we could grant everyone a rent to own program, we'd still not have enough houses, enough units, right, available. So just to put it in perspective, Matt, uh, till today, I haven't had one person who, uh, who has taken that rent to own program and come, come to me and say, hey, wife, I did the rent to own program and now I own the home. Not, not one person. So it is more advantageous to the landlord, right? And I don't know how uh, it's gonna be implemented. So there's lots of questions about how are you gonna force uh, landlords to implement the rent to own program? And then um, obviously the rents are higher themselves right now. So uh, paying higher than the current market rents, it's, it's an issue. And um, I don't know how many landlords, landlords are going to sign up for this. Even if they do, I, I don't know how many renters will actually pay more to save for a deposit and actually own a home. Um, I think it's just uh, it's no smoke smoke there is no not really substance uh, with the rent to own programs right mm -hmm. it just, just sounds good and of course the last point a new tax-free savings account don't we already have that don't we already have like the RRSP that you save into and you take 35 uh, you know thousand dollars uh, so if you have already got an RRSP where you can save thirty five thousand dollars minimum and your spouse has got $35,000 RSP limit anyways. So there you got $70,000 already um, in uh, tax saved, uh, you know, uh, income that you can put towards your home if you're a first time home buyer. So um, I'm not sure how this new account mm -hmm. is, is going to be of any help. Yeah. And again, I think there's some more details to it, but this, whether it's a tax free savings account, some sort of new hybrid account that they create, Again, it might give people a little bit more access to money. They may not have to pay it back the same way they used to under the new program, but realistically, again, I don't think it's going to move the needle. Yeah, so I guess looking at the NDP plan here, you know, build 500,000 affordable homes in 10 years. Again, that's still going to have the same issues as what the Liberals had. 20% yeah. foreign buyers tax, again, similar to what you were saying before, wise really not going to make much of a, a yeah. difference, right? In the big and, and you know what? So the foreign buyer, the twenty percent tax, they're gonna pay. Mm -hmm. They're yeah. gonna pay. They're, they're, you, you think the foreign buyer is is gonna shy away from the twenty percent tax because they know they're gonna make five times the amount of money when they when they sell it, you know, a year or two years from now. Uh, it, the foreign buyer is just gonna pay that twenty percent tax. It's it's not a big deal for the foreign buyer. Mm -hmm. And then eliminating federal HST or GST on affordable home and rental projects. 
Again, it might save a little bit of money, but it's unlikely going to spur a huge amount of new builds. You, you know what? Eventually, uh, these kinds of uh, you know uh, programs where you are ta you're uh, cutting tax somewhere is just going to increase uh, your personal tax uh, or uh, tax another another place. Okay, it has to balance out, right? It's it's income to the government, and it can't just uh, be, go without it. And then they've got the reintroduced 30-year insured mortgages. Again, this is essentially just going to extend payments for people. It technically makes it slightly more affordable on a monthly basis, but what you're really doing is locking someone in to more payments for a longer period of time. Right. Again, that's not really going to solve the fact that we don't have enough houses. Yeah. And then we've got rental support of up to 5,000 per family. Again, this might help individuals that are looking to rent um, out units, but again, understand that that $5,000, if it goes to a lot of families, every family is going to have $5,000 now to bid on more rental units. And again, that's actually just, just going to yeah, raise. It's, it's just going to equalize the playing field again. Right? Mm -hmm. And then streamline funding for co op, social, and nonprofit housing. Definitely, if there's fat that can be cut from the bureaucracy, I'm always for that. But again, it it's something that's very fuzzy when you say it, right? We're going to streamline things, we're going to find efficiencies. Yeah. And then we've got the conservative platform, build 1 million homes in three years. Again, that's going to still have the same issues that the others do. Two-year ban on foreign buyers. Pretty not, much making, the, not making the impact. Yeah. Yet. And then ease stress test for requirements for self-employed and contractors. Again, I think this is such a small part of the population, right? Yeah. That one, it's not going to impact that many people. And then secondly, again, still we need a lot more properties. Yeah. And looking at extending the seven to 10-year mortgage term options, you know, right now there's already seven and 10 year mortgage options available to a lot yes. of Canadians, but we're just not incentivized it's, it's, because it's, they're so expensive. Yeah, the, the banker is not gonna ask you to you know, put in the 10 year uh, term because it's, it's more expensive and you will run away from it. But uh, there is options available and maybe you actually, you should take a 10 year term. If you're in the long run, maybe you should take a 10 year term because you're gonna eventually pay down faster. Just a mm -hmm. side note. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, for the conservatives, they're encouraging investment, and I believe this is specific to foreign investors, but encouraging investment in purpose-built rentals. I think this definitely could have an impact, but it really comes down to how exactly they're going to encourage or foster that, right? Mm -hmm. And then finally, capital gains deferral on investment properties if reinvested into another uh, investment property. This is uh, similar to kind of what the U.S. has had for a long time called the 1031 exchange. Yeah, so I think, I think this is going on the little bit of a positive direction for for investors i think uh, that that might make make a difference again it's an election promise it's, it's going mm -hmm. to be still taking a long time to come into law but uh, i think this this last point there is is significant if if that's true and they stand by it and they can make it a law i think um, you know uh, they could they could gain potential uh, votes from the investors yeah, and it certainly could allow investors to recycle their money and improve additional units, bring on additional rental stock and things of that nature. Again, the devil's definitely in the details when it comes to any of these policies and whether they'll actually implement it. Um, but before we wrap up today, Wise, I would love to just catch that quick little video you've got of you touring or uh, showing off the uh, new entrance that you've added to your uh, basement apartment. Sure. So just a little... Uh Two second update. Uh, this is my YouTube channel, Wise Ahmed. So please sign up and subscribe. Um, so here is is the video. And so this is the project that we were chatting about. I think last time or two videos ago, right? Exactly. Two uh, last last time actually we did chat about this. So I'm having uh, the basement done. So this is actually a double entrance that I'm making for my basement. It's mm -hmm. just not a single door. You can see the big, big entrance, almost five feet. Uh, stairs, all concrete poured in last last week. And yeah, that's the entrance from side entrance coming in from the to the backyard. And this uh, was quite a project. Uh, it was good to see how they they get it done. They they come in with their machinery, dig it out, and uh, yeah, mm -hmm. so uh, pour in the concrete, uh, you know, uh, etc. So yeah, yeah it, was, it was good to have that. Idea. Great to see the progress, and definitely just uh, 
um, cool to see it come to fruition, right? I remember you showing us the plans last month and now seeing that double wide space. Also, I think that's just a great idea for tenants moving furniture in and out. So right. uh, and, really and appreciate it. brighter as well because then what I did is that I asked them to put a glass uh, yeah. no doors so that it's going to be brighter in the in the basement. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm looking forward to getting continuous updates from you guys every month on this project because I think it's a great example for the investors at home that maybe you've been sitting on the sidelines like, oh, I don't know, this seems too big, too scary. Well, again, it's great when you can have a local realtor in your corner likewise that's actually pulling the trigger, doing these investments himself, doing the value add renovations that really allow you to maximize your returns, whether you're looking to flip or whether you're looking to just buy and hold that property, or maybe you just want to add a uh, income suite to help you with the mortgages. So if you guys want to reach out to Wise, all his contact information is in the video description down below. Really encourage you guys to reach out. It's so important that you've got someone in your corner that is a local expert. And again, appreciate you sharing your perspective on everything going on in the Milton market, Wise. Thank you, Matt.